This channel is proudly sponsored by the Ira Kaiju Kickstarter, a tabletop RPG where you play as a Kaiju, defending its territory from other giant monsters. Please check out the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Hi, welcome to part one of my review featuring Ira Lost Legend, the core rulebook. This is a Final Fantasy VII inspired tabletop RPG using the Ira core system. But there are also elements from other games in the Final Fantasy series. For example, the man in the cover, he kinda reminds you of Snow from Final Fantasy XIII, right? Now let's talk about the quality of the PDF. The quality is great, everything is well written, organized and explained. The document is fully bookmarked and hyperlinked. And when it comes to the illustrations, the art, they look like a video game inspired tabletop RPG, certainly. And the graphic design and layout has a certain science fantasy flair to it, so overall the quality is perfect. Now let's talk about the contents. The book starts with an introduction to the setting, to the theme, to what is going on in this world. Stardust Incorporated is the largest commercial entity in the world. Most people, whether of the human species, the reptilian goith, or the cat-like sen, Think of it as an energy supplier. The Stardust power generators are undoubtedly the corporation's best known contribution. There is a type of being in this world that is not fully attached to this material plane, the ethereals. They returned to this place three decades ago and brought with them chaos. Monsters emerged first, beasts with magical abilities that roam the land ranging in size from small to many times the size of any corporeal being. Ethereals are not evil, at least not all of them. They manifest when someone embeds a crystal in their flesh. This person becomes the possessed, and the ethereals are connected to them. Effectively, the ethereals depend on their possessed hosts to manifest in the world, although they are two separate entities. The ethereal ability to wield spells offered cities the chance to claim their independence from the ruling empire at the time, which was based in the ancient structure of Nirman. The soldiers and possessed that each city gathered were said to be deterrents, that they would keep the inhabitants safe. But war began. After almost 20 years of bloody conflict, one empire dubbed the Stardust Empire emerged victorious. Its forces included possessed and ordinary people, but the backbone of its army was comprised of robots, powered by the same crystals that the ethereals used to manifest in this plane of existence. These crystals made the robots impervious to many weapons and even many spells. Most of the world surrendered to them swiftly. A few regions kept on fighting, however, most notably Nirman. The robots didn't go away when the war ended. They became the main peacekeeping force used to hold the empire together. Everyone who had fought on the losing side settled down, expecting the normal injustices against them from this new conquering empire. Oppression is just a fact of life. Over the next few years, the empire changed its form. Claiming to be uninterested in political dominion over the world, it became a corporation instead, Stardust Incorporated. Stardust's economic control was as absolute as its power was under military rule. Around this time, an anomaly occurred. Usually, the ethereals did not remain in this physical plane. They vanished within a few years, taking with them the many monsters that also manifested alongside them. But this time they remained. And the warrior monks, who have protected our world from monsters and dispensed justice for generations, have been rendered obsolete by Stardust's robots. Although most still learn to fight to protect themselves from roaming monsters, Stardust Incorporated officials claim it is tradition rather than necessity, especially in the cities. Not everyone is happy with the way the world currently is, and in recent years, resistance movements have been formed. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about the prefall era of this setting. As you can see, there are many nods, tips of the hat towards Final Fantasy. 
Stardust Incorporated reminds you of Shinra, and the Ethereals may remind you of the summons, but there are still plenty of original things to make this game stand on its own. Thank you for watching this part of the review, don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham El Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pinned comment below. And remember, master roleplay and you will master the game. Once again, thank you and see you later.